And greetings, friends, around the world. The Jesus Christ of your Bible is coming again soon. Very specific events are starting to occur which Jesus directly prophesied. Time is running out for this world society. The basic order of events and time frame is available if you are really interested in what is going to happen. Remember what a shock it was, my friends, when America dropped the first atomic bomb on Hiroshima? Multiple thousands were killed instantly, but virtually no one had any idea that this kind of weapon even existed. As Christ's servant, I want you to realize that a lot of unexpected events will begin to seriously impact this world soon. Your life will be affected dramatically within the next several years. I don't mean 20 or 30, I mean the next several years. I'm going to give you specific things to watch for to help you know what to do. Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World presents Roderick C. Meredith, Richard Ames, John O'Gwen. Bringing you the good news of your future in tomorrow's world. This week, Roderick C. Meredith explains. Time is running out. And now, Roderick C. Meredith. My friends, time is definitely running out for this world society. I know you've heard all kinds of things about the end of the world. Time and time again, misguided people and misguided ministers have been terribly disappointed. I'm very well aware of that. However, if the God of the Bible is real, think about it, and if He means what He says in the Bible, then an end of this human order is going to occur. The true Jesus Christ of the Bible will return as King of Kings. But why now? Why do I think this will occur within about the next 10 to 15 years? Why? Because as we have shown you before, and we've shown you at the beginning of this program, man now has the capacity to blast himself off this planet. That was never possible until recent years. Atomic bombs and hydrogen bombs by the dozen do exist in the United States and Russia. All kinds of other weapons exist. Terrible biological weapons and other terrible weapons have come along. Several smaller nations either have or are developing atomic weapons. Notice what Jesus Christ predicted specifically. Turn with me. Check up on me. See what's been right there in your Bible all this time. Matthew 24. Turn to Matthew 24 and let's begin reading in verse 3. His disciples came and asked him, Tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of the end of this world? What will be the sign of your coming? and the end of the age. Notice in verse 7, he said, Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines. Famines are going to get a lot worse at the time of the end. Pestilences, that's disease epidemics, my friends, they're going to start coming along big time within the next several years. In your life, you'll see it. And earthquakes, these are already coming along. You remember the recent tsunami? that was caused by this terrible earthquake in eastern Sumatra. Earthquakes in various places, all these are the beginning of sorrows. That's not the end. Notice down in verse 21, For then will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world. Think about it. Since the beginning of the world. This is Jesus Christ speaking. He should know. The greatest time in human history will begin to occur. It's never happened before until this time, no nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. Human life would be blasted off this planet, except for God's intervention. No flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. My friends, the possibility for human annihilation, for cosmicide, now exists for the first time in human history. 
we now have that capacity. Yes, Christ's prophecies are now on the verge of happening. Also, more serious wars and famine all over the world are beginning. Have you seen the images of the hundreds of thousands of people in the Darfur region of Africa starving to death and all the other things that are happening to them? in Indonesia, Sri Lanka, and other nations affected by the horrible earthquake and tsunami which struck last December. These people are suffering. All over the world, these things are getting worse. For on Christ's authority, I tell you, the truly horrifying disease epidemics. He said pestilence. Disease epidemics will soon capture the world news headlines. Watch for them. You heard it on this program. And monstrous earthquake that horrible earthquake which struck eastern Sumatra in December was only the beginning. For the God of heaven will get man's attention, my friends. They're going to stop saying God is dead. They'll stop that, most of them. They'll begin to realize there is some outside force. Something is going on. Mankind will soon learn not to despise God's laws and God's ways. They despise them. They'll learn not to. Notice a vital but often overlooked prophecy back in Leviticus 26. Turn with me there in your Bible. Leviticus 26 in your Bible. Turn there, verse 3. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments, God's commandments, and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season. The land will yield its produce. He shows all kinds of blessings are going to come if his people would obey him. But notice, my friends, beginning in verse 14. Notice beginning in verse 14, But if you do not obey me and do not observe all these commandments, and if you despise my statutes, do we in America and the Western world despise increasingly in our way of life the horrible entertainment, the, the illicit sex and violence, all the watered-down way of life that we uh, uh, go along with today in our society, even our judges trying to get rid of the Ten Commandments? Think about it. We despise God's commandments and God's statutes. He says, if you do that, he says, and do not perform all my commandments, but break my covenant, I will do this to you. I will even appoint terror over you. What's the first thing? Terror. And that word may easily refer and could logically refer to terrorism. Terrorism. That struck about three and a half years ago, my friends. It's already underway all over the world. In Bali, in various parts of Africa, in the Middle East, they've had terrorism going on over and over, not just the Twin Towers. All over this earth, terrorist acts are increasing. He said terror is going to come. Wasting disease, yes, the terrible uh, epidemics that are going to occur and fever which shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. The collapse of the Twin Towers in New York was only the beginning and the almost daily terrorism in Iraq is seriously weakening the power and prestige of the United States. Notice as you read on, he said, you shall sow your seed in vain, your enemies shall eat it, those who hate you shall reign over you. That's going to begin to happen and is already beginning to happen to certain British-descended peoples in various nations in Africa that they used to control. Yes, they send their sins, but God is using others to humble those people. After this, he said in verse 18, If you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times, or some say sevenfold, some translators render it, for your sins. I will break the pride of your power. He's going to break the pride that we in America and the British descended peoples have. We certainly have had claim to great power in the past. We claim to be Christians. We talk the talk, but we do not walk the walk. We have the Bible. We have millions of Bibles and the knowledge of the true God, but we do not try to do what God says. And God, frankly, my friends, is holding us more accountable than some of these other nations because of that. And unless we come as a people to a profound repentance before the God of the Bible, get on our knees and cry out to the true God of creation, to the true Jesus Christ of the Bible, who is very seldom preached, a real Christ of authority, who tells us to obey the Father, who said, if you would enter into life, keep the commandments. Unless we turn to that God, an entire series of prophesied events will truly shake our peoples. Think about it. It's going to affect your life. 
At this point, I want to invite you to call or write immediately for a free copy of our truly eye-opening booklet entitled, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. Here's this booklet. 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. This booklet spells out in detail 14 key events, basic events, which will happen and will lead right up to Christ's second coming. These are specific events, my friends. You need to understand. 14 signs announcing Christ's return makes these coming events very understandable. They're listed. They're explained. So write or call today and request an absolutely free copy of this powerful booklet, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. Just ask for the booklet on 14 signs. That's all you need. Call now. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's world. Call now. Now back to our topic, my friends. Time is running out. Notice again, for those of you who've turned in late, we're in Leviticus 26, a dual prophecy with an ancient fulfillment, but very definitely something that is going to happen within the next 10 or 15 years of your life, as I've been explaining. He showed how he would bless his people in the earlier verses of this chapter if we kept his commandments and obeyed him. But in verse 14, the Almighty God says, But if you do not obey me and do not observe all these commandments, if you despise, notice that word, despise my statutes, or if your soul abhors my judgments, so you do not perform all my commandments, but break my covenant, I will do this to you. So the first thing he says is what? I will appoint over you terror or terrorism and wasting disease and fever. These things are going to begin to occur. Then he starts coming to famine, lack of food, and other problems that are going to occur. And he said, as we saw, he will break the pride of our power. We may still have a certain amount of power, America and the British nations, but we will lose the pride in the power as we've already been doing. We'll begin to back down. We'll be afraid to use that power so often in the right way. Again, why is time running out now? Not only because of threatened cosmicide, as I've explained, and terrorism, enormous disease epidemics, famine, massive earthquakes are beginning to occur more than ever, as Jesus said, as we saw in Matthew 24, 7. But because we are truly near the end of 6,000 years, get it, 6,000 years that God has allotted for man's civilization to continue under the influence of Satan the devil. This is not God's world at all. You look around at the horrible suffering going on. This is not God's world. I know back in Sunday school I was taught this is, is my father's world. A lot of you were taught, though, it's not. It's God's earth, but not God's world. This society is Satan's world. And Jesus said, the prince of this world is about to come and has nothing in me. We've shown you scripture after scripture detailing that Jesus said, the apostle said, that Satan is the invisible God of this society, this world. And God has allowed man under Satan's influence to continue with his civilization, his educational system, his religious ideas, and his political ideas, and all these things, his entertainment, so-called entertainment, filled with violence and sex and a whole degenerate approach to life for the last 6,000 years. And we find, as you really study prophecy, that it isn't up, wasn't up at Archbishop Usher, Usher's chronology, which would have been about five years ago in 2000. No, there's a little bit more time because of the accession years of the kings. But it's soon going to be up. 
I'll come to that later. Notice Second Peter 3 now in your Bible. Second Peter chapter 3, beginning in verse 8. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. He'd been talking, as you'll look at the earlier verses, about God's coming judgment and perdition and all these things. He's talking about God's plan and how he deals with humankind. And in that plan, he's allotted 6,000 years. Remember the six days of creation that God describes in the first two or three chapters of Genesis. The seventh day was the day of rest. So the first 6,000 years were for man to write the lessons not learn them, but write the lessons of human experience. We are writing these lessons. We've not yet learned these lessons, my friends. God wants all of us to come to profound repentance. And we've got to do that. We're going to learn those lessons at that time. The Bible shows that each day is a, is a thousand-year period. These six days, the six-day week of prophecy equals 6,000 years, and they're almost up. And the Sabbath was a time of rest. It was the seventh day. That will be the final 1,000-year period described in several places in the Bible, four or five times, right in Revelation chapter 20. 1,000 years of peace under the rule of Jesus Christ, the millennium. It's about here. A deep study of biblical chronology reveals that the end of 6,000 years of history will be up in less than 20 years. And your Bible clearly indicates that a great tribulation lasting three and a half years will begin before that time. Therefore, my friends, the great tribulation prophesied in your Bible, you count back, will undoubtedly begin within the next 7 to 15 years of your life, approximately. It might begin in just six or seven, but probably seven to twelve, a little more than that, perhaps. The great tribulation is going to begin affecting your life. Turn back to Matthew 24 once again. Yes, we need to get real. These things are beginning to happen, and you have to watch, and you have to understand the meaning of these horrible events that are beginning to unfold. Terrible things are happening. I'm making this program just before President Bush's inaugural What's going to happen then? I don't know. But I know terrible things are going to begin to happen, no doubt, yet this spring. And God indicates these things are going to speed up at the time of the end, and the great God will intervene in the order that I have said. These things will occur and affect your life now. Matthew 24, verse 21. He says, There will be great tribulation, remember, such as has not been since the beginning of the world, nor uh, until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, notice it, no flesh would be saved. Or some translate it, no flesh would be saved alive. These last days, these last years before the end may be shortened by a merciful God. So don't think we have 20 years to wait. We don't. These days may well be shortened. But you and I need to watch for two special events prophesied to occur immediately before the Great Tribulation. Notice Matthew 24 again, verse 14. Matthew 24, verse 14. Jesus said, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world, that's all over the world, not to convert everybody, but preached as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Think about that. The true gospel, the gospel you're hearing on this program from Richard Ames, John O'Gwen, and me, the gospel of the coming kingdom of God, the coming government of God, talking about a real God that's about to intervene and set up a government on this earth with David over the house of Israel, the twelve apostles over each individual nation of Israel, based on God's Ten Commandments, based on God's laws. It's a whole pattern made very clear in the Bible. We're preaching that message, and we're, one of the very, we're among the very few preaching that message. The gospel of the kingdom of God will be preached over all the world. Most people will not be converted, but it will be a witness. God help you to understand. God help you to respond. And then the end will come. He says in verse 15 then, 
the next big thing to occur. Therefore, when you see the abomination, notice this word, horrible something to come, an abomination, a desolation spoken of where Christ referred to the Old Testament as the Word of God continually. Don't be afraid of the Old Testament. Some churches say that's all done away. We don't pay attention to it. Well, we do pay attention to it on this program. And Christ paid attention to it, and He called it over and over the Word of God. The Son of God felt it was part of the Word of God, and so should you. The abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, watch for it, standing in the holy place. Now, the holy place was normally the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Whoever reads, let him understand We need to understand, and as these things wind up at the time of the end, we will give you increasing understanding on this program. You are now seeing and hearing this gospel of Christ's soon coming kingdom being preached. God help you to understand that. And now we ask you, watch Jerusalem. Watch Jerusalem. On the famed Temple Mount at Jerusalem, the Jewish people will probably once again offer animal sacrifices. Notice the prophecy in Daniel, to which Jesus Christ referred back in Daniel 11. Turn with me back there. Daniel 11:31. And forces shall be mustered by this coming dictator, and they shall defile the sanctuary fortress. Then they shall take away the daily sacrifices and place there the abomination of desolation. A pagan idol is going to be set up right in God's holy place. Nearly all scholars recognize a typical forerunner of this was carried out by a king named Antiochus Epiphanes about 170 B.C., You need to read about that man in commentaries or history. Watch for this kind of development in and around Jerusalem. Watch for a temple or altar to be erected on the Temple Mount. Jesus tells us, watch and pray. This kind of event will be one of the final warnings that the Great Tribulation is immediately at hand. It will affect your life more than you begin to realize. Pay attention. Again, my friends, be sure to call or write for our exciting booklet entitled 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. You need this information. It will affect your life. 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return will make your newspaper reading and your television news watching much more meaningful and exciting. It will make prophecy come alive. So write or call now and request your free copy, absolutely free, upon your request of 14 signs announcing Christ's return. Just ask for the booklet on 14 signs. That's all you need. Call the toll-free number now. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insight on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's world. Call now. Finally, my friends, notice again Daniel chapter 11. Daniel 11 that Jesus referred to in your Bible. Turn there. Daniel 11:31 says, At the time of the end here, forces will be mustered by this coming dictator, and they shall defile the sanctuary fortress, And they shall take away the daily sacrifice. There are going to be animal sacrifices instituted again on this earth in Jerusalem, probably on the Temple Mount. Think about it. Something you can watch. And take uh, they'll take away the daily sacrifices and place there the abomination of desolation. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, that'll be most of humanity, frankly, he will corrupt this coming dictator with flattery. But the people who know their God, grant, God grant that that be you and me. The people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. 
We've got to do a powerful work to get this message around the world. And those of the people who understand shall instruct many. Yet for many days they'll fall by sword, flame, captivity, and plundering. Now when they shall fall, they'll be aided with a little help, but many shall join them by intrigue. And some of those of understanding shall fall. Frankly, that's already been happening, going to happen even more, big time, to refine them, to purge them, and to make them white until the time of the end, because it is still for the appointed time. So it comes right down to the time of the end, my friends. Will you personally learn to trust in the God of the Bible as he begins to intervene in human affairs? Will you have the courage to go through the fiery trials ahead for God's true servants? Frankly, only as you study the Bible, as you really study this book, not just read it, just read it, Psalm 23 for sentiments, but really study this book and feed on Christ will you develop this kind of living faith. Galatians 2.20 is my favorite scripture. Turn there if you're not familiar with it. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The apostle Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. That's the key. Christ lived an obedient life. He said, I've kept my Father's commandments. He showed us how to live. He lived by every word of God. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Christ lives in me, Paul said, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live with the faith of, not just faith in, but the faith of the Son of God. Understand, my friends, the true Jesus Christ must live His life within you through the Holy Spirit. Then you will make it. So learn to really study this book, the Bible. Study it. Pray to your Creator heartfeltly for understanding and the faith you need to do what God says. Again, call now and request your free copy of 14 Signs, this powerful booklet, and tune in every week to Tomorrow's World program. On this program, you will gain precious information and insights available nowhere else. Richard Ames, John O'Gwen, and I will give you understanding of current events and of the exciting prophecies of tomorrow's world. See you right here next week. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina. 28227. All of the literature offered on today's program can be ordered absolutely free off our website at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.